All right, guys, it'll be iCup Fit here, and uh, thanks for tuning in to iCup TV. And you're watching season 20, week one of Clan League between Disturbed Minds and Noob's team. And if you guys didn't realize about last game, well, actually, I'll introduce players. In spawning in the bottom left, it will be our United Kingdom Disturbed Minds, Teddy, who's uh, lost two of the games so far. Spawning in the top left, it will be. Um, Talking about League of Legends, actually. But spawning in the top left, it'll be a noob team V1. V1 successfully won two games. I don't know if this is like a show match or whatever, but it's here, and I'll cast the game. I can't exactly know why, but uh, it's here. It might be in substitution for the 2v2 or another a, a, a series. It might have been the best of five, actually, what this might have turned into be. Because that would have realistically been sense. Because the best of three would be up to, that would be up to three games. The best of five would be up to five games. Meaning that UK has one... I mean, not... not, not not UK. Teddy! I'm always saying that because I have his little... That, his, uh... Country, like, logo, like, right next to his name. But, uh... Apparently I'm talking about other games that they play. But, uh, we'll see if we're going to see another <laughs> another 9 pool coming out of Teddy. That looks like it's what well, we might see again. And we're going to see another Forge Fox coming out of V1. He could go double cannon. I wouldn't put that behind him just for the past three games. But like I was saying, uh, the, if it was a best of three, it, game number two would have ended that series. But if it was a best of three... It, a, a best, a, I mean, a best of five would be three. You have to win three games. So if V one's able to actually overcome this, this will end the series outright. But I, again, there's there's a spoiler spoiler one. So I I see up to three replays per matchup anyway. So I don't actually know how this game's actually gonna play out. So we'll see. Now. We're going to be seeing the uh, Scouting Probe going to the wrong location first off. and Oh, the map is Jade, by the way. Uh, reverse ramp, so you're going to see a lot of buildings on the high ground. But, I mean, you're going to see a Fortress expand anyway. But you just want you just don't want range units attacking you on the on the high ground while your range units on the low ground. It's a very bad scenario because you have a miss rate. If you're, if say, example, if you're V1 here and his, his Dragoons are down here when he has Hydra up here. They're going to hit all the time versus the Dragoons are going to like a 50 or 25% miss rate with that. So, we, but we'll be seeing a nine, uh, a pool before hatch, so a little less all in. Coming, coming out of Denny, and that's kind of hard to say after these past two games, but for sure he's going for a less all in build as he does get, he does get that hatchery up. Now, this might, I predict that what he's going to be doing, this is going to be mainly for a macro hatch just to pump out a thousand links. I feel like that's what it's going to be. No, but he's droning up though. That could be what the scenario is, because I always did a build. Ooh, he's going to take a third, actually. So it looks like a little bit more standard pool before hatch into three base Zerg. Oddly enough, he's not even taking it far off, which I like this. I like this more than, you know, the base off here, because it's more susceptible to being attacked. But regardless, we're, we're seeing that three base play anyway. But, you know, just going for a little more aggression. You know, he's not going to get the super... He's not going to have such a macro advantage for, like, 30 or 45 seconds. See, oopsie, I did not mean to do that. About 45 seconds, but that, that probe is gonna be like, yo, dude, I'm gonna go. Uh, I guess, I guess V1 just loves to micro his probe around. I don't, I don't know what's up with that, but he will be putting it on that Nexus right now. So he did double cannon Nexus and Gateway is what he did do, and we're seeing. Are we seeing Lair? He just started the extractor, so uh, such a bad Z map. Actually, Teddy, I think you're wrong with that because the the. I mean, mainly because, mainly because I, 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 Jade has really big openings. Like the ramp is huge. This ramp is huge. The middle is huge. I mean, going up here is not gonna help you. But that's what happens in a lot of, like, pretty much all maps. Um, a lot of special like natural maps. Where you, you have a closed area, so. I think for the, the, the center of the map is very, very Zerg favored. Especially when you get to mid and late game where the Hydras are less of an issue when you start getting those Ling numbers. When you get the 3-3 three, three Lings with Crackling with 5-3 Ultras. I mean, they it doesn't matter about this this, this ramp play anymore. They, they just charge up here and just kill off everything. That's kind of what happens. So ramps don't really play such a huge role against in Zerg mid to late game. Ramps are more for those smaller skirmishes where that... Where that one hit does really matter compared to a very big skirmish where there's like set like 50 dragoons firing at each other if one misses it's not the greatest deal but but still it still matters but but we're seeing more link production so we're seeing more of a macro style coming out of out of teddy right now and he's going hydrogen with speed so he's going three base hydra and he, without lair which is you normally see lair 
but that's not to say he's just getting out his Hydra a bit faster. He's getting more upgrades. Now, he could... I mean, from this, I I think... I think he should... He'd be better off getting a second Hydra Den. Just so he could push out that much more quicker. Because if he got a second Hydra Den, he could do both upgrades very, very quickly. And just, you know, optimize the second gas for a little bit until he, until he can get that second upgrade. Then go back to one gas if he needs it. But it will be 27 supply, 230. So somehow Protoss is actually ahead. And he's off of three base. But we're seeing Citadel and three more gateways coming down right now for V1 right now. I'm not sure if he got range, but he did get a, a fairly efficient, uh, fairly fast Citadel. But no... Uh, I mean, he can go with this build. I mean, I've seen three gate Zealot. I don't normally see four gate, but uh, that's that's pretty... Well, this again, this is off actually two base. So it's actually, this isn't really all that bad, but... He's going for mainstream, and he's going. He's not opting out Stargate. Uh, well, partially the reason is because he sees Hydra, but that would actually help him. Because what, what happens sometimes is that, ooh, dancing Hydra right there. What, what this? What that? What? Well, the Corsair does. It just stalls for time, for the storm to get completed, so he can get um. So he can defend against it because there's, there's a lot of Hydra coming out right now. I mean, he looks like he's just gonna go for it. He might be, he'll be able to step off the uh, gateway if he's not careful. He might lose that Hydra, but this gateway will fall right now. He might be able to step off plus one, two, which might be a little bit. But he's just gonna go for it. He's gonna be target finding the the uh, Ken right there. And uh, does he have the upgrade right now? I believe he's finished all the upgrades. But Zells are gonna be closing in on here. There is not enough Hydra to deal with this right now. Now, but he's getting the best position as he possibly can, best arc he possibly can, and all the, the all those elves are melting away right now, and things are looking pretty grim right now for V1 right here. He doesn't have much. He's continuing to produce zealots. He doesn't. That is a lot of hydra going in the natural right now. The probes are gonna have to get in the action here, and oh my goodness, British zealots are closing in on well, trying to kill off as many hydra as possible. But there's continuing to be more hydra coming out as well right here. There's a GG by V1, and that concludes this game. And, um, yeah, so we're gonna have to see, uh, I, I just, I, I, on my other monitor, I could check what the, what the replays were, and thi this is the last replay, I don't have any other replays. I, sometimes, sometimes I, just, I don't have all the replays, but this is what I have, this is what I'm given, so, new team has successfully won this, um, the series, uh, and I don't think, no, Disturbed Minds has failed to win any of these matchups. Yeah, none of these matchups. So, that concludes that, pretty much that. For fifth of the game here, uh, we saw him trying to cut corners in this build. We saw V1 trying to cut corners in this build. Uh, which isn't recommended unless you know what you're doing. I, of what V1 said, I think he's fairly new. Possibly, because he said that the second time he played on Jade, and Jade's a pretty common map, but whatever, regardless, it doesn't really matter, but th the fact of the matter is that he cut corners, you go Stargate after you do a Forge Fast Stand with plus one, because you're killing off the Overlords in the base, no, you could get one course here, you can get two, or you can even get plus one with that if you want to go all in with it, but, or go more heavy into air attack later on, if you're going to plan on do that to late game, but you get, you get those, you get those course here to stall for the Hydra, so the Hydra have to stay back, not all the Hydra are attacking you. So you get more time for Storm, and then you can press Storm, and then you kill off all the Hydra. Then you can do your counterattack, or you can go take your thirds. What tends to be when that when that goes into mid-game, that ten, tends to be what it is. But sometimes you just lose to the first initial push, which happens, and it's what we did see in this game. So well played by Teddy. For the first time, he didn't go for an all-in Ling build, for sure. And he just did a timing push with 3-base Hydra, and ultimately won that game. Also, for you, I failed to mention all the APMs this game, but... Eh, whatever. It doesn't really matter. They were all about even. They're around 200, averaging around both. I mean, one first game was 195 to 162. No, 192. Two, and then game number two was 230 to 191. And then game three was 206 to 232. So, apparently, fairly efficiently around the same level. So, but, um, so I just recommend get the Stargate so you can attack. So you can stall for time to get Storm out. Most of the time, like, I believe 95% of the games I've seen, when you go early storm before 9 minutes, you lose. Like, that, I don't know why that happens, it just does. 
and you got it around six minutes and thirty seconds. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Six minutes and a half, like six point five minutes in the game. So without further ado, we'll go on to a the next series uh, that will be whatever. What 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 were the guys I was doing? I'm trying to find it. We'll go on to Black Dragon versus whoever they're playing week one. So thanks for watching, guys, and have a nice day. Peace.